education to all the refugees worldwide. It's not often you meet someone who survived years of suffering and trauma without even a hint of self-pity or bitterness. Vincent Lee is one of those quite remarkable beings. At the age of six, he was taken from his parents by the Pol Pot regime and put to work in one of the Khmer Rouge labour camps, which became known as the Killing Fields. After four years of non-stop labour, intimidation and beatings, he escaped, risking his life to cross the Thai-Cambodian border to three years of life in refugee camps. Finally, in 1981, he was accepted as a refugee by the Australian government and arrived here with only his grandmother and a few friends at the age of 13. Having supported himself through high school and university, he now works as an international personal banker in central Sydney. I got about four years banking experience from retail banking to also corporate banking. Um, I worked for National Bank for two years before I graduated from university. Um, I got a Bachelor of Economics degree. I got to meet people from Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, Japanese. Um, we are more concentrate on the, the Asian customers because we have the expertise in the languages. So how many languages do you speak? Uh, I used to speak about seven or eight, but now I reduce it down to about five or six. Oh, because that's shocking. <laughs> What was life like in the labour camps? It's a living hell. The government at the time, they just wanted to work and work and work harder. You could imagine some, you know, children, they were only about eight, nine or ten, about the same age as I am. We couldn't complete it sometimes and we have to stay longer. We have to stay probably more than 18 hours if we have to. If you don't finish the job at all within one day, then you either get, get beaten up by the elder, um, or they won't give you any food to eat. Was that the worst period of your life? Um, yes, you can say that. Um, they call it the year, I mean, year zero. Like, there's no, there's no year, there's no date, there's no month, no time at all. You only know that it's morning. You know, you, you wake up in the morning, you go to work, and you complete your job, then you can come to your hut. Yeah, that's all right. By 1987, Vincent had saved enough money to fly his parents and five brothers from their Thai refugee camps to Australia. Unlike the majority of the local Cambodian community who live in Cabramatta in Sydney's west, Vincent decided on the leafy terraced suburb of Glebe in the inner city. There's no point for me to go and live in Cabramatta. It doesn't mean that I don't like those people or I don't like the area. It's just simply I came here with a goal and I think in order for me to achieve that particular goal I have to actually do something about it. If you're staying within your own group only you become like a myopics. You can't see what beyond. I would encourage a lot of people to actually spread out a little bit rather than form their own little uh, community. Did you know much about Australia before you came here? No, nothing. I didn't know anything about Australia at all. The only country I knew was, well, the only two countries I knew of was um, France and the United States. And when I applied to, I mean, as a refugee to come to Australia, that was the first time I heard about Australia. I knew nothing about this country. And uh, someone told me, they go to Australia. It's a big country. It's a very nice place. A lot of people will look after you, so that's why I choose Australia. But Vincent's early years here in Australia weren't easy. When I first arrived here, I got a lot of people told me to go back home, you know, get on your boat and hop, you know, hop on your boat and go back home. They called me Refo, they called me all sorts of nicknames. And in English phrase, they said something like sticks and stone would break my bones, but it doesn't hurt me. I think wood doesn't hurt me. I don't agree in that because words actually hurt you inside, deep right inside and men mentally. Um, and actually can drive someone crazy. I thought, look, I have to come here, start it all over again, and, and no one around me can help me. My parents was not around with me or by me. 
Vincent survived for 12 years without his parents. He cleaned classrooms and worked nights to pay his school fees and combined work and study to complete his degree. But he's aware many Australians still consider refugees a drain on the system. A lot of people tend to think that those refugees would come in here and simply, you know, go on the dollar queues and get the unemployment benefits and so on. Um, I don't think that many people, I mean, like the majority of the people who come here and uh, if they can get a job, they would prefer to get a job because it's a kind of investment if you look at it this way. Um, whereas, of course, the older generation, say the parents, may not be able to contribute too much into the country. But what you're looking at, the younger generation, they actually play an important part of building up the whole, you mean, our nation here. I have another one then. <laughs> I have uh, an uncle who had four children and they all got killed, the parents and the four children. My grandfather uh, died in, during the Pol Pot regime uh, because of starvation and illness. But uh, our family was very lucky, like we survived through the Pol Pot regime. Vincent's been back to visit Cambodia, but he swears he'd never return to live there. The Pol Pot hasn't gone yet. The Pol Pot is still around everywhere. And there's a lot of fighting happen every now and then. I don't think it's finished yet. Every time I go overseas, I always think of Australia as my home. Um, every time when the aeroplane actually arrives in Sydney airport, I feel like I'm home. Hallelujah.